whatever the research i did or whatever i know about cows are from the books which are mostly written in gujarati language i did translate this one but since no one is interested to read technical knowledge for whom i should translate and publish because i have not recovered my previous even money <laughs> and whatever little bit of car as prabhupa said india now only few remnants of vedic civilization similarly very few places in somewhere in tamil nadu in tanjore area or erode they have some they are still taking care of uh, nice care of cows or you go to rajasthan and gujarat or very few places north india or bengal forget it they don't know animal husbandry britishers has made us forgot the our natural thing and to be now this every time this uh, cow slaughter ban issue comes in parliament muslim mps are the one to support it our own so called hindus are against <laughs> this is the reality because many muslims are originally animal keepers that that is their, that was their profession and anyway most of them are converted in india i, I had purchased uh, one gir cow from a muslim uh, cow herd there are many muslim cow herd in gir gujarat area when i paid him took the delivery he fed uh, jagari to the cow he did aarti he did aarti to the cow and then he he came to us in his bike for 50 km he said in in the meantime if some police catches you i will tell you my cow i have sold it to them so there are muslim cow herds they know if that person is not good they are going to harm cow they will not sell for any amount of money but government they want to advertise this and Akbar's father, Homai, he he told while dying to Akbar that if you want to rule rule in India, make sure that you put ban on cow slaughter. Then only you will be uh, this Hindu. Otherwise, they will kick you out. And that he and then it's like a farman or decree in India. Yeah, yeah. He. Since there is still that decree, the ban on cow slaughter is is there in Gwalior Fort. Gwalior is in Madhya Pradesh. Mm-hmm. That fort has this universal decree, royal this farman that no one should kill a cow. Jahangir was not so much interested, and then Aurangzeb, sorry, Sahajan was even less, and Aurangzeb fully he was not totally yeah. against that. So. the upgrading and this is what my plan is how much uh, i may be able to do that only rather gopina knows <clears throat> there are many ways to increase cow's milk first of all we should have a good fodder <coughs> fodder i mean natural fodder which grows grass on its own and <clears throat> about the now what we are feeding to the cows especially in india either jowar bajra or mail corn 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 pearl millet and sorghum in english yeah and i was arguing in my own mind for several years that our teeth are this much cow teeth are this much why cow is not able to chew this they leave half more than 50% of the stock of uh, baja or maize they don't it just uh eat the leaves the stock remains and i was arguing why compared to human uh, their teeth are quite bulk why they are not eating first of all this made with fat this what crop is grown with putting lots of fertilizer and cow is nose is a most sensitive yeah. she will recognize immediately what is good quality you must <laughs> meet any garbage cow is she she smells even i would say western cows no cow is a non hum cow who doesn't have hum even they have this capabilities because i knew it but there is one book which i will give you in one american has written about this that cow is the best chemist 
she knows more, more of a chemistry of the land than humans do. Put a uh, fodder with a fertilizer, grown with fertilizer and natural fodder. Cow, cow will eat first that. Unless or until she doesn't have a choice. So when you uh, either grow this uh, corn or others by organic fertilizer or chemical, so in that comparison, even if it's or, uh, grown with organic fertilizer, still cow will eat maybe 10% more compared to non-organic. Still will leave the, that stock. After doing so much thinking and research, I found out that the stalk has so many tissues inside. It's quite hard. Yeah. Whereas grass, even if it grows 7-8 feet high, <coughs> it is hollow inside. So cows or even buffalo can chew it. Which is not the case with cereal grasses. Uh, sorghum, palmillet, corn. And there are many natural kinds of grasses which even today grows in a grassland or even the, on the corner of the farm that seed should be taken or should be planted and that part that should be that breeding should be done good grasses yeah. then there is another what we generally in India call Barshi moral alpha alpha or lucerne yeah. these are actually not grass it's a kind of it's a vegetation it's like more, more they have uh, this legume they are legume based if you want good milk there is more milk and more butter in the milk then you to feed this apart from cereal grass you know to feed this leguminous crop then you get more yield milk and plus butter contents in the milk will increase that is the first thing then nature has given so much but we humans we think that we know better and we don't allow cows to graze yeah. in the grazing there are so many leguminous even uh, vegetation grows with cow eats then there are various other ways to increase cow milk you may be knowing this plant uh, called drumstick drumstick, right? drumstick. yeah, yeah. Leaves of that drumstick in African countries, many African countries, they are feeding these leaves to the cows, and there has been reported of increase in milk from 15% to 46%. Yeah, I told you about this. Mm. And drumstick leaves. So that is available freely, and you don't need fertilizer anyway because cow dung itself is a fertilizer. Too. So grow with that. And personally, I have seen if you grow anything with chemical and with fertilizer, just shifting from chemical to organic, the milk quality will increase by 8 to 10 percent approximately. Just shifting. So there is drumstick, then there is an algae called azola. azola. Grows in water, more like looks like yeah, lotus, uh, lotus kind of yeah. thing. If you fed this, this then it around. 20-25% in different research on the net you will find that there is increase in milk. Then in nature there are many herbs which are like, how do you say, galactogenous or something like that. Yeah, galactogenous. If they are fed to the cows, then milk quantity increases. So I did research, I could find around 100, 115. Uh -huh. The plants? Plants. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All over world, hmm. there may be more. There will be more, definitely. But yeah. till now, I could re, uh, find out only this. Actually, I mean, these cows knows which are the yes. lactogens, and they can go on daily. Yes. But we are giving only specific particular yes. food daily. Same yes. fodder, same fodder, same yes. fodder. Don't go. Stay. Stay. And eat. We personally, we don't like us to eat the same thing. But we don't have brain to think. How will cow like? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. don't eat khichdi every day. Yeah, that's that's a common thing. Yeah, we, we need sometimes sweet and sometimes rice and pulao and pizza yeah. and papa, many things. Yeah. But we don't feed. For us, cow is just a machine, just milk. Yes, that's all. That's it. So of that 100 or 150 in herbs, around 70s are grow, uh, growing in India, mm. 
And since I am come from Ayurvedic family, we have Ayurvedic uh, shop also. Mm-hmm. Fifty items are available in my shop. Oh, that's and, a good thing. And that dose is small. Twenty-five to forty grams per day combined. Twenty grams or twelve and a half gram twice a mm-hmm. day. So mm-hmm. maximum forty grams per day. Mm-hmm. And increasing milk by from. 15 to 35 percent. Okay. That's in the record. Even few years, I the university have done research. Then you need to feed a carrot. Okay. But one one should make sure because carrot is hot by nature. It should not be given to the pregnant cows. Otherwise, it it will have abortion. But then there is a beet beetroot. Beetroot. Then a sweet potato. And turnip. If these things are fed to the cows, again there is a increase in milk by thirty percent. The blood will increase in them. Then there is another way. I don't know how we have reached. There is system of farming called home of farming, agni hotra, doing yagya and then ash. Yeah. Should be uh, mixed with the feed, cow feed, or the ash should be. Put in the uh, water where c- cow drinks, and that has reported increase in milk uh, by around 15-20 percent. And Agni Hotra is being very much documented by the government of Peru, their agriculture department. They are certifying it. Oh my goodness! Many people they take Vedic culture and then we are not interested. So there are many grasses, there are legumes, there are vegetables like beetroot. Then there are okay. algae. Then plant like and there are many trees in Konkan and this uh, Naxalites area of Maharashtra, uh, Marathwada. There is tree called Anjan. Anjan. That leaves are uh, to, if you feed it to the cows. Anjan. Okay. Even this mulberry. Mulberry. Mulberry leaves if you feed then that is also increasing milk. Mm-hmm. I I do not recall. I have everything listed List. now is in the hard disk. But while speaking, I, it it may happen after ten minutes I will remember then speak again. So let's say if you, let's say a cow is giving azon today, three liters of milk. By doing all these things, ten, let's say average twenty percent increase by drum say twenty percent by through agni hotra twenty percent to LK. You should you can have hundred percent increase. But let's cow three liter of uh, cow now after uh, giving birth. If you start feeding all this within 15 days, it will come up to at least four and half, if not six. Then another criteria for upgradation is that the calf, either male or female, if you want to make a good breeding bull or good bull to work in the farm or a good mother of a future, that offspring should be fed milk. For eight to ten months, but then cow should be a good milker. Otherwise, if it dries up early, because that's what happens. Because we don't take care of a cows, we don't feed, give good feed. That is the criteria: eight to ten months, and maximum one or one and half order only. Not that she drinks; she is allowed to drink all four orders, and then she falls sick. Yeah. Because In Kaliyug, we have a tendency to go from one extreme to the other. Yeah. So many people, including devotees, whom I have encountered, they give this argument: No a cow that offering, they know how much to drink. <laughs> so just and when we don't uh, allow her to drink milk, then that is exploitation. So let her drink. That is not. Then they fall sick, and then. We don't in, uh, we don't have we don't uh, work with bull. That problem we are cows are lo- not allowed to mate, compounding the problem. And then sometimes their offspring we feed them everything, so there is no milk, and then they fall sick. So expenditure for medical that increases. Personally, because I have cows, once upon a time I have 46 cows, but due to drought I have to give up. My expenditure for cows medication per year was not more than two thousand rupees. Mm. Yes, not more than two thousand rupees. I am not bluffing. 
If you do it a traditional way, then cows remain anyway healthy. When you feed healthy herbs, healthy grass, That's even true. let's say our 50 years back, our forefathers were not as uh, sick as what we are because of our contaminated food, mostly. So, majority of the Gaushalas, they have a high expenditure for medication. And when, as soon as you allow cows to graze, their expenditure should decrease. But why doesn't happen in most of our, of our uh, 